Hello all, my name is Omar. I'm one of your head PIs for Digital Logic this semester, and today I'm going to go through uh, creating a new Quartus project, placing down some components, and then simulating. Um, my installation of Quartus looks a little bit different to yours. Uh, the main difference is that in this EDA tool options here, instead of putting the directory for model sim in this model sim box. There is no model sim box, so you'll have to put it in the Questa Intel FPGA box, but you can just copy and paste it, create the new project with the same settings, and it'll work great. So let's begin. So the first thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna, is you're going to create a new project. Here, you're gonna decide the directory for this project. My recommendation is that you make a dedicated directory for all your Quartus projects. So you'll see I have one here named Quartus. And then we're just going to make a new folder. We will call it Quartus Tutorial. All right, and then now we decide on the name of the project. The name of the project should be the same as the name of the top level entity. You can think of the top level entity as the part of the project that's going to contain, that's going to be flashed to the board, right? Um, like let's say that you have two components and they each have their separate inputs and outputs Whichever one is your top level entity is the one that's actually going to go on the board It's the one that you're going to do the pin assignments for and all that stuff. So First we'll just name the project. We will just name it Quartus Tutorial and that will also be the name of the top level design entity Then we're going to start with an empty project and now we're in here. We don't have any files that we want to add. We're going to make them in the project so we can just click next. Now, this part is very important. You want to go to board and then you want to select here the max 10 family. And then, you, and then if you need to, you can make the name box a little bit bigger. And then you want to select the max 10 DE10 light. This is the board that we've given you for the class. And if you want to be able to flash the board from Quartus, you have to make sure to select this option. Then after that, you make sure you uncheck the box that says create top level design file. You want to uncheck this box. Then we can click next. Now that we're here, you're going to choose the tool name. In your case, it's going to be Quest to Intel FPGA. And then for format, you're going to scroll down, you're going to click VHDL. Then you can leave all of this stuff blank. Click next one more time. It's gonna show you this confirmation screen. Then you can click finish. And now we're going to be put into our Quartus project. The first thing that you'll need to do when creating a Quartus project is going to be to make your first file, which is going to be uh, your top level entity for the time being. It's taking a little bit to open, there we go. So we're going to go to File, New, and then you're going to go under Design Files, and you're going to click Pluck Diagram Slash Schematic File. This is going to be a type of design that's very similar to Logisim. And the first thing that we're going to do is that we're going to place down our gates. So you'll see in this symbol box right here, all of the gates are going to be under primitives and then logic you can see all of them here but typically you can just type the name of the gate you want and then two for two inputs three for three inputs and then you have four six eight and twelve yes, but we're just going to use a two input and gate so we're going to have this here then we're going to just zoom a little zoom in a little bit and now we're going to place our inputs and outputs this these are going to be what's actually uh, on your board represented by the switches and LEDs and all that stuff. So we're just going to name this input 1. We're going to name this input 2. Then finally we're going to go here and we're going to name this output 1. There are a couple names that are reserved by Quartus. You can't name things reg, you can't name things like and, uh, you can't name these just input and output or you can and you can't name them in and out. Um, just generally try to stick to slightly longer names. You can put numbers if you need to and you shouldn't have any issues. Now that we have these, we're going to connect them to wires. Quartus, uh, all of the wires in Quartus are basically tunnels from Logisim. Once you create a wire, you can click on it and then start typing to assign it a name. So we're just going to call this in one. Then we're going to make another wire and then we're going to just start typing. We'll name this one in two. If you want to change the location of the text, you can click on it and then move it with the arrow keys. Then we're going to connect this wire and we're just going to name this out one. All right, 
Now that we have these wires here, we can just connect them to our AND gate by clicking and dragging to create a wire. And then we'll go down in one. We'll do the same thing here. So we have in two. Then we'll connect this to an output and we'll name it out one. All right, now we're going to go and save our file and you'll see that it'll already have a name for us. The name is our top level entity, so we'll save that. And then afterwards, you want to compile your design. If you are only doing simulations and you're not ready to flash it to the board yet, you should click this button up here or this one down here. This one performs just analysis and synthesis, which is what you need to simulate. If you're going to compile to the board, then you want to do the full compile, which can either be done with this button or with this one down here. But a full compile is going to take much more time because it has to do a lot of stuff to actually put it on the board. So for now, we're just going to run the analysis and synthesis. You'll see that it's going to take a little bit, but it shouldn't take too long. And there we go. So now that our analysis and synthesis is done, is done we, can com we can simulate. So we're going to go click new and then we're going to scroll down here and we're going to find in verification and debugging files, we're going to find university program VWF. Then we're going to click OK and we're going to be greeted with this. Now, how this works is that you're going to assign your inputs and outputs, and then you're going to manually change them to be zero and one with this graphical interface. So to add your inputs and outputs, you're going to go to edit, then insert, then insert node or bus. You click node finder, then you click list, and you're going to see we have our inputs and outputs here. So we're going to do that. We're going to click this arrow right here after selecting all of them or you can click this one to just move all of them. Then we're going to click OK and OK, and you'll see that now they are there. Let's just zoom in a little bit. You'll see that these ones, by default, they're both zero, and right now the output is X's because we haven't set a, uh, a thing, or we haven't changed the inputs. We haven't run the simulation yet. So let's say that we want to select this area right here. You'll see that it now turns blue, and we have all of these options up here. The main ones that you're going to be using are zero to make it zero, one to make it one, um, invert to just invert the value. If you're selecting multiple, then you can make this then you can make this one count up, or you can use this one to have it go up and down on a clock, which is going to be very relevant for your lab three. What we're going to do is we're going to go all the way up to here, and then we're going to set this one on a clock, and we'll say the period is just going to be. 20 nanoseconds so now you'll see that every 20 nanoseconds it goes or every 10 nanoseconds it goes up another 10 later it goes down so it has a total period of 20 nanoseconds then we're going to take this one we're just going to select the whole thing and then we're going to make it high now that we have our thing you'll see that whenever one uh, input one is low and input two is high the output is going to be zero and then when both are high the output is going to be one so now that we've done that, we can go to simulation and we can go run functional simulation. Then it's going to ask you to save your changes. You're going to want to save the .vwf file. Then it's going to generate your test bench. It's going to take a little bit to run the simulation. But then when that is done, you're going to see the outputs and inputs right here. So you can see here that the output matches the behavior that we would expect from an AND gate. When both inputs are one, it's high, and otherwise it's zero. All right, then what we can do if we want to uh, run another simulation, let's say that we delete this AND gate, we want to replace it with a NAND gate. So we're just going to slot that right in. Then we can go to File, Open, Simulation, or sorry, we can go to File, Open, choose all files and we'll see our waveform.vwf. We can open that and we're greeted with this one more time. But before that, we've changed our file. So we want to make sure that we recompile it. Okay, we just need to give Cordis a little bit. Now we can go to file, open, make sure that all files are selected down here so we can see our waveform.vwf open it and then we're just going to leave the inputs same as before then we're going to go to simulation run functional simulation and you'll see now the outputs are inverted or now the output is inverted because it's a NAND gate when both inputs are one the output is zero 
That is a small tutorial on how to set up a Quartus project, how to place down components, and how to run a simulation. The main relevant components that you're going to need for your lab three are going to be these logic gates right here. And then you also have your, all of your flip flops. So if you want to place down a D flip flop, that's going to just be DFF right here. You can see your D input, your Q output and your clock signal. If you want a toggle flip flop, that's there. If you want a JK flip flop, that's there. Or if you want an SR flip flop, those are also there. They're under the primitives and then storage sections. And you'll see that they have all sorts of different flip flops that uh, you're probably never going to need. Um, if you have any questions about how to use Quartus, feel free to reach out to any of the members of the PI teams and happy designing.